as I have been always telling you, that Sahaj Yoga is the sprouting of your seed within you. When the seed is dormant, you cannot visualize the maps it has in it, of all the creations it is going to create. Out of one seed, how many trees have grown, how many fruits have come out, and how many seeds are coming out, and how many they are going to produce. You cannot understand how dynamic it is. There has been talk about the Spirit within it. Many have said, that the Spirit is to be brought into our conscious mind. We have to achieve our Spirit. We have to get our Yoga, the union with God. When they said it, they meant it to be done, not to be just talked about. But as everything goes to waste, much more than it is utilized, all these description of the Self to be achieved, how, when, everything got lost because they started just talking about it. People like to intellectualize everything. They do not want to imbibe it. Just to talk big about something, their ego gets pampered, they'll stand up and give big lectures on Gita and all those things. But they have no idea as to what Gita wants you to do. It wants you to find out the Truth. It wants you to get your Realization, to have your Yoga established. You have to be born again, you have to be Christian, as they said. You have to be baptized. But the difference between the reality and unreality is such that we think if we talk about it, we have done it. This is the illusion, the Mahamaya. We live with it. And we carry on with it, we are very happy with it, because it means you do not have to face any reality. You can live with unreal life. But you cannot even live with unreal life, can you? That is not going to give you joy. With unreality you are not going to be satisfied. You are not going to get your joy, you are not going to get your meaning, and you are going to discard yourself as a useless thing unless and until you find out why are you here. So everybody wants to find out in a way, but on a slippery ground. He wants to find out the reality on one side, on the other side the slippery ground is always taking him away from the unreality. The struggle is on within us. You have to just keep yourself on the ground, not allow yourself to be slipped out into any extreme behavior, for anything whatsoever. Just be there, it works out. But we are extremists, in everything we go to extremes. Just now, today I was discussing capitalism, democracy and communism. Say, Abraham Lincoln was a real ISO, no doubt. He had his vision of democracy. But he could not fulfill it, because others were not real ISOs, souls, they could not come up to his vision and they could not imbibe these things within them. They just praised him, he is their hero, they will make a statue out of him, garland him, write books on him, but nothing of Abraham Lincoln goes into their being, nothing. They do not follow him in the way he lived his life. They will call them Lincolnist or something like that. <laughs> Some sort of a ism they will put to that. They will try to possess him, brand him into something. 
but not try to imbibe him into themselves. Then Lenin was a realized soul too, as I told you, he was a realized soul. He had a vision of collectivity, very proper vision he had. But he found that people are going to fail him, he cannot do it, so he had to, he shifted into another, he drifted. Anywhere you find a person who is a realized soul, in his own way he has made contribution. I'll say Shakespeare the other day went to yeah. No, Shakespeare was a very great realized soul, no doubt about it. His contribution is so beautiful, but people do not see it. They have no eyes to see what he's trying to show. See, we saw Hamlet. Hamlet is what? Is nothing he's trying to show the futility of every nonsense we do. First of all, a man killing another king, then the woman running after that man. Because the father is killed, the father comes to the boy and compels him that you should take a revenge, he taking revenge. One little girl, innocent girl, madly loving that fellow. I mean, the whole life is made into something so small. The mother's life, she has no esteem. She thinks that by loving this man, she is the last word, so she can kill her husband. The husband, so-called the second husband, he thinks by killing this man and getting this woman, he achieves the last. Then the third person is this poor son who gets the ghost to tell him that this has happened. The ghost himself should die and go away from this world and live where he is. But he comes back and tells him that you take the revenge. He is not interested in his spirit in his well-being, the father also. Now the son takes a tip and he, he goes on hating. He gets into this of destroying. He wants to destroy this man. He, in that destruction he kills the father of the, that little girl, uh, his, his uh, uh, fiancé, and the girl also dies, she also becomes mad, everybody becomes mad, even Hamlet becomes mad. What does he show? You see, I call him, Shakespeare, a Avdhuta. Avdhuta is a person who is beyond. He is a person who is not an incarnation. Incarnation comes on this earth, plays with you, lives with you, acts like you, goes with you into all kinds of moods and things you live with and tries to help you in that, on that level. The incarnation can come down very little. They do not. They keep themselves there. And what do they show? The futility, the futility of this kind of a nonsensical life people are leading. This is what he tried to show in Hamlet. Now how many people who read Hamlet understand this point, that the futility of even, even taking the revenge on the, his mother or the fellow who killed his father was there? It's so evident. All those emotions to which we pay so much importance and make it so, imp so much identified with your whole life are nothing but wasteful and futile things. We are wasting our energy. So he puts a drama before you. See this drama, is a play, see now. Now what happens? You become Hamlet, if you see that. You become one of the persons. If you see that dram drama, you will become Hamlet. Immediately you start thinking, how many re revenges I have to take? You will make a list of people. You immediately become Hamlet. You do not become Shakespeare, you become Hamlet. And now how many people have I to hurt? How many revenges have I to take? Which is the way I should do? Should I play a drama the way he played? Or you can even become the lady, you can even become the person who killed. You can become anything instead of becoming the person who has created it. That's how we live in unreality in our life all the time. Instead of imbibing Christ's life within our life, we find out another drama. We play with that drama and identify ourselves with that drama. This drama is going to keep you in that dramatic condition all the time. Reality is to finish the drama, to know that it is a drama, we are not part and parcel of that. This is what is the real state of the mind. Unless and until that is achieved, 
you are not going to be happy, you are not going to be satisfied. You are not going to be <coughs> yourself. You are not going to find out your meaning. This is what Sahaja Yoga is. That a happening takes place within you, the Kundalini rises within you. She passes through all these various centers and gives you that, what we call the Self-realization, by enlightening your consciousness with the Spirit. If seed is the Spirit, then Kundalini is the water that pours on it its grace and manifests it in our consciousness. It is manifested by itself, but not in our consciousness. So our consciousness and our attention becomes one with that. This is how the things work out. One has to know that God has created you. You have not created yourself. He has made you human beings from amoeba stage. He has brought you to this level and He is going to give you the ultimate. He is going to do it for you. It's His job. It's not your job. Now in a case like that, when you think that there is, say, first cases we can take of people who believe in social injustices or sort of going on, what should we do in social injustice? Which is the greatest force, which is the greatest power on this earth? The one which manages all the other powers is the power of God. Today, as the time is, achieve that power and then work it out through that power and not through your intellectual power, which will create problems for you. Any social injustice, if you work it out on your level, will never reach its successful stage. It will be just falling short of its achievement. Everything has gone wrong because of that. The power that controls the whole universe, every part of it, every particle of it, every atom of it is the power which is called as divine power of God. That is the power of God's love. In His love, He bestows all that is beautiful to you and removes all that is ugly in you. For that He may have to sometimes even kill you. He may have to even destroy. It's His power. It's not your power to destroy anyone. You have no right to destroy it. It is His power to destroy you. Just put your hands like this and sit quietly. Don't make noises and things in Sahaja Yoga. You see, all these things these gurus have done to you and you are really ruined by it. That happening takes place within yourself and not outside. All these ideas come to us again from the same myth that we can achieve our realization. We can stand on our head, we can breathe fast, we can breathe less. How can it be? I mean, everything, these things are done by animals and by every person. How can you do it? You cannot do Anything to achieve your Self-Realization, this must be accepted. It's complete humility. It's also God's will. Everything He does. Only thing what you have to do is to merge into His power and then you can tell Him whatever you like because then you become His power and you can work it out. But anything external that you are doing now before Realization has to meet. When the power flows through you, then you can maneuver it. Then you can organize it, you can work it out. First of all, achieve your spirit. Then allow it to manifest itself within you. Fully establish it. After full establishment, then you work it out. There is no hanky-panky about it once you do. And you cannot befool anyone. It's something that has to happen within you. We are deceiving ourselves. Do not do that. We do not want to waste our lives. We are not going to make ourselves so low as to 
destroy this being which is just there to manifest. All those things that we worry about, say our personal things and natural things and this and that and that and that, you cannot help it now. You cannot cure it. Unless and until you are a realized soul, you cannot help it. And that to a realized soul in a very collective way. If you are collectively realized, you can do it. Otherwise you cannot do it. The whole emancipation and the whole great work of bringing humanity into the kingdom of God is only possible if you all get your realization fully established. Now after realization also, I received a telephone call today from someone. That mother day, uh, day I got realization, all my virus went away, I got completely relaxed and the cool breeze started coming into my hand, I felt very much better. But now gradually again the tension is mounting up. Is my Self-realization temporary? Self-realization is not temporary, but you are temporary. How much attention have you paid to yourself? For example, some guest is coming to your house and you close the doors to him. Will he come to you, begging of you? If he comes inside also, you do not give it a proper eminence as the position is. The spirit is the highest. And if you do not give it the highest position, that my spirit is the highest, and I must pay full attention to my spirit, and you fritter away your attention onto other things, is he going to be there on your seat of heart? Is he going to be settled down there? How much attention have you paid to your, to your self -realization? You have taken it for granted. And then, what have you done about it? The spirit won't be happy with one soul. When the spirit starts manifesting through you, like light, it wants that it should be put on a higher place from where everybody could see and get their spirit. It wants its company. It seeks its collectivity. If it is not there, it is going to run away. If you cannot enjoy the love of other Sahajogis, you are not going to achieve it. Now in this country of yours, I must say we had a variety of Sahajogis, which is something such a great drama for me also to see. And the varieties and varieties I have seen, oh, in the West I've never seen them before, especially in England, because we are very cosmopolitan and international. Now the <coughs> lowest level of Sahaja Yogis are there who think that they can exploit Sahaja Yoga to such an extent, I mean they are such low types that you can't even. They go to, say, a program in the ashram, then they eat food, that's all not even pay for it. I mean, that level we have. There are many who just never pay their money. Can you imagine? Of that level we have people who go to the ashram where they make others pay for their food. Just they want to go there. Here you are paying for a wretched guru who came the other day and gave him a Rolls Royce as a present. Do you know that? Who is well known? that he is a swindler, he made money and all that, out of hypnotism, people starved themselves, begged, borrowed and gave money to him for, to buy a Rolls Royce. And here is Sahaja Yoga, which gets all kinds of lepers. One of them is this kind. I think this is the worst of all. And this kind of people should not expect much in front of It's better they leave and go away. They cannot rise of this level. Who think that they can go to a place and eat the food and do not even pay and make others pay? I mean, this is too much. I can't even understand such people. 
I mean, these are not human beings. There must be some worms born here or some parasites. Then the second kind, uh, there are some people who, who do not know that you have to work for surgery. You have to work for others. <coughs> you are not going to die if you are working for others. <coughs> you are not to judge that what others are working. If I were to judge how much you are working, I would have given up absolutely long time back. See the disparity in my style of working and your style of working. You know that I work day in and day out. Nights together I keep awake and I travel for miles together without any complaint. Today is the first day for that something. After all, I have this physical body. And you know how much I have worked. Working on single person for hours together and also we lose that person so many times. It's so disappointing and so frustrating. And you people are avoiding work. You want others to wash your dishes even. Why don't you wash the dishes of others? For a change. What does it matter? You are not going to die. But this comes out of all these things, come out of ego. But what is the first one? I don't know from where it comes that you don't pay for your food. These people will never stick on to Sahaja Yoga unless anti they change themselves. One has to work very, very hard on yourself. Now the third time is to keep yourself clean. You have to. You have to see what are your vibrations, how are you, what are your problems. You all have had problems you created for yourself. If you were beautiful flowers, I would have done the job myself. But no, you have really ruined yourself, so you have to clear out yourself. You have to work it out. You have to clear out yourself, you have to love yourself as you have to love others, now you have to love yourself. Now, come to that point. You have to respect yourself because this is now the temple of God, you are a realized soul. <coughs> you are a saint. Love yourself. How much I love you. In the same way, you have to love yourself and care for your body, care for your mind, care for your Spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. Is my spirit happy with me? Am I doing what I should have done for my spirit? Or am I doing something for my ego? Or for my super ego? Or for saving some money out of my food? All these things. Or to be seen within us. I'm not saying it for others, I'm saying for individual persons to see what are our problems are. Now even those who are ardently believing into Sahaja Yoga and are going into it must know that they have had really big problems. I've never told, but some of you are suffering from cancer. which is settling in fast and I'm worried about them. Some of you have serious physical problems, which I have not told you. Some of you have very, very serious mental problems. You must see all this. You must correct yourself. As I said, you must love yourself and understand that you are the saint. You cannot just play about with yourself and try to ruin it. Just not paying any attention to yourself, just taking it easy. It's a precious trust you have with you because your spirit is enlightened, because you are the light for all the rest of the people of this world who are walking in the dark. Keep your light afloat, keep it clean. You are specially, you are bestowed this upon you, this great grace has fallen. All this beauty, are you going to waste it? Because your light is not shown through your dirty panels. 
we have to think about it. And that's how, once you come up at least this much, then one can work it. Face yourself as you are. You try to give explanations. Explanations are not one. Who wants explanation here? Whom are you giving? I am your mother. I love you. What explanations are you giving? Even anything big happens to you, I will go out of the way to save you. Even if you beat me and murder me, still I love you. So what explanation can you give? No explanation is needed, my children. It is what you do to yourself is the point. I am concerned about you. What are you doing? Yourself is the main point. And when you understand that, am I the most beautiful representative of Sahaja Yoga? Am I the person who can influence others with my like? Am I looking after my like? It's very easy to make out, you get your vibration. Your vibrations are flowing if you are in life. There's a way of finding it out where you are. It's not like other gurus just taking money from you and you are walking in the dark. If you know what chakras you are causing, where is the problem, what is happening to you, why it is happening, what are the deities, what mantras to be said, everything you know despite that, why is it that there is no progress and growth? Because you have no self-esteem, you have no love, or you are not in the center. Unless and until you are in the center. That's what these avdutas have done all throughout. They have tried to show that be in the center. Why are you going to extreme? Leave it to God. Now, when it comes to that, we are very clever to cheat ourselves. That's intelligent. Leave it to God. So cleansing you leave it to God, all right? That's what part you leave it to God. That God should clean us. That part is God's job. And what is your job? Then is to do what will you do? If I ask, then what are you supposed to do? If I have to do cleaning, I have to look after all your meditation, I have to put your Kundalini up, I have to keep it there hanging, and you have to pull that. That's your job. In every way possible, if you try to pull down your Kundalini, how long is she going to do that? I'm giving you the extreme case. But despite all that, Kundalini is your own mother. I'm much more spread out than she. She's just localized with you. She loves you. Really. She loves you very much. And she tells me what's wrong with you. She asks for forgiveness for you. She wants me to stand her child. She puts forward all the problems you have. She wants me to work hard. She works hard herself very much, day in and day out. Once she's awake and she has no sleep, 24 hours she's working, she's helping you, she's guiding you, she's coordinating all the things that are needed for you. She brings all the blessings upon you to show that now you are awakened, you are growing, you are transforming, you are changing. See, see for you. She is the one who pierces the first round and the whole grace falls out. Without her piercing, the grace is also useless. Without her awakening, I am useless. Without her help, I cannot do anything. To such a mother, what home is to be there? What do we do for her to please her? We should find out. She's pleased all the time, that doesn't mean that you take her for granted. It is your duty, your gratitude, which expands you. So to grow in the center is to be in the center, to see that you do not go to extremes. As I have told you, that the things that are to be done by you should be done by you and whatever are to be done by God will be done by God. The simple example is that when it comes to cleansing your personal thing, you leave it to God. But when it comes, say, to telling others something which will hurt them, 
you take it up upon yourself. Which will show off your ego. We have had examples and examples of being oriented people, horrible people they were. They took up upon themselves Sahaja Yoga, they became the big like gurus and they started preaching. I'm so frightened in my lifetime. If they are doing like this, what is going to happen? <laughs> Humble down yourself in your heart. There resides the system of your being, of your attraction. Attraction for the divine, for God Almighty to be gracious on you, to be happy with you, as in Hindi language to be prasanna with you, to be pleased with you. We say, O oh God, be gracious to us, be kind to us, bestow your grace upon us and your mercy upon us. We ask in humility. He loves you. No one can love like Him. Love is tired of it. He's so great that you cannot describe Him in words. Just you can feel Him. But we should not be torn for ourselves and for Him. We are problems for Him. We are creating problems for Him. We are not helping in any way. We are nothing but problems and problems for Him. A day will come, He will just receive problems. Give up your personal things, personal problems, and think of the bigger problems for which you have to ask His grace. Do not start solving yourself those problems, but ask for His grace. And be humble, be humble in your heart. Be a witness of the whole thing, the absurdity into which you are driven into. Be a witness. As Hamlet has shown how he is ruined the family, his own and everybody's family. He was doing something right according to all human laws, but not according to God's law. You have not to take the law into your hands of God. God is going to. But for collective things, you have got quotes and this and that. Let them work it out. You don't worry about those. You worry about your own punishments you want to bestow on a person. Do not do that. Let God punish them. Why do you want to do the dirty work of punishment? It's horrible. I mean, if I have to punish somebody, I, I don't like it. I mean, it's horrible thing to punish them. Why do you want to do it? Do the beautiful, that is, love others. Loving is the most beautiful thing. It's the most energy giving when you love others only that the love flows into you. Otherwise, why should love come into you? If you are not giving the light, why should light come to you? Love others. As you love thyself. But here, thy self-love itself is destructive. Christ never knew there are people like that. Who are all the time destructive to themselves. There are in so many lectures I have suggested what is the special love of the West is. And one of them is left we should do. And if you go to the subtlest of subtlest point where we are at least we should be, that we can always find out the injustice done to us and to others, but not what in the justice we are doing to others. To avoid that, we say we are human. Supposing I'm my child. Now I never take up the blame on them that I'm wrong to my own. But what I'll say, that attention in me, what am I to do? So or else what second thing I will do is to feel guilty, oh, I know, I know, I should not, but I am this. And in this small thing you can see how we are deceiving ourselves. The self, this is your life, 
of self which is your meaning, the self that is such Kirana, that's the one which is the truth, which is the ascension of God, and which is the joy. We are deceiving it every moment. Better to be honest, face ourselves and put it down. May God bless you.